I'm Rodney Woods. I'm uh, currently an executive in healthcare um, with a payer um, here in the South. Um, been doing a lot of work um, in various aspects of process improvement, um, you know, strategy, things in that nature that deals with people, processes, and technology. Backgrounds in electrical engineering, mathematics, you know, master's in business, um, doctoral degree in uh, strategic foresight, which uh, was very exciting for me since a lot of this um, AI technologies and things that are coming on board um, really gives me an opportunity to, to look at trends and things that are happening across various sectors and uh, just to see what how it impacts, you know, organizations. When it comes to staying uh, on top of a lot of the changes going on in, uh, in the AI world, uh, there's a couple of uh, sources and things that I always look to. One is the MIT Tech Review, um, since they are heavily involved in, in AI um, technology and things, but they also uh, keep abreast of a lot of the legal um, and regulatory ramifications that's happening as well. So that's one of my sources that I always um, go to. The other one uh, that I uh, look at quite heavily and uh, is just really some of the companies that are involved, you know, OpenAI, Microsoft, Google, Amazon, a lot of them have on their websites, um, you know, framework around policies and things, you know, how they're viewing, you know, AI and how they plan on applying it across your organization, but they also make it pretty public um, in, in essence to really start a dialogue um, with folks to get a bit clearer understanding and admittedly saying they don't know everything so they really want to have that sort of conversation and of course there um, the u.s has their own um, ai safety um, institute that's out so there's definitely some information there but you know yeah, i never want to negate the fact of looking even at the eu because they're doing a lot of things as well in this whole sector of uh, you know legal ramifications and things along those lines and so just trying to stay abreast in that regard. The one thing as far as being efficient, I, I set up a Google alert um, and title it to go out and search for things around um, uh, legal things, uh, ramifications and things along those lines. And so instead of me doing all this research, the Google alert actually does the research for me and puts it in my inbox. So that's been very helpful in, in uh, being more efficient in how to utilize my time. As, as far as you know, striking a balance um, uh, in their technology, it's it's really going to center around um, understanding, I guess, where you want to go um, as an organization. I mean, there's a lot of directions that you can actually probably look into. I think the so one of the holistic approaches that I'm seeing happening across because there's been a lot of conversation around privacy bias and things in that regard is having a cross-functional team. That's all your legal people, compliance you know, your operational people and everything else, but not just, you know, uh, from a job description or background perspective, but also just from a cultural perspective, because people see things differently. And uh, and that's been one of the um, things that I thought was very interesting that I'm seeing sort of to bubble to the surface um, as far as this cross um, cultural sort of aspect. The other thing that I, um, um, as far as dealing with it from an innovation perspective, it's really trying to balance you know, compliance and privacy with innovation and looking at it almost in a matrix perspective and say, if I go down this path, you know, from an innovation, what's the impact, you know, on people, on, um, you know, different cultures and things in that regard. And it really gives you an open um, perspective and transparency to try to make the right decisions. But there again, having a cross section of not, in the, not only the skills, but people with different cultural backgrounds, it really feeds into the conversation more beautifully um, to be able to make sure you're making the right decisions, you know, on innovation, but also trying to manage the tension between that and, uh, and compliance. So those are some of the things that, you know, you can look at, but also just keeping an eye on the regulatory, you know, things that are happening because they're changing all the time. And so just having a separate team or even champions that are actually bring that information into you, uh, that would be quite beneficial on those lines as well. So international, um, 
I think the opportunity that's there is engaging all of the different cultures and things that you have within the organization, uh, not just the leadership, but people in those various regions and sectors along those lines, because their rules and regulations will be totally different if you're looking in the U.S., uh, being aware of the nuances of language, um, you know, this the cultural differences and things that are just norms that you need to be aware of. And so when you approach it from that aspect, it's really looking at it. Um, yes, this might be a, a good innovation opportunity, but when I go into XYZ country, what's the impact on the people? And in doing some sort of risk mitigation, it might mean you might have to pull back a little bit on that innovation along those lines, but at least you're being forward thinking uh, to see what are the slight ramifications, you know, doing even some testing and everything else with a cross, you know, um, a group of individuals and getting feedback would be helpful. But the the whole aspect, you, you're just trying to be very transparent and being very accountable no matter where you are. And that allows, um, you know, not only get, you know, some really good feedback, but I think it really builds trust, you know, with the folks that you're dealing with as well. Well, looking at um, when you're looking at AI and bringing it into strategic planning, uh, there's a lot of great things that um, the tool can do, but there's also some cautionary things. Number one, if you're just, you know, putting something in AI and says, hey, you know, what does the future hold along those lines? Think of looking at it as a crystal ball. I mean, that's a recipe for disaster. I think one of the things that are, is very, very important when you're looking at AI and bring it along that it does very, very well, of course, is looking at you know, historical information and everything else and seeing, you know, what are some trends and things that might have happened, but also looking in in uh, the future as far as what's happening on social media, what's the trends that are going there. And you, you can really start doing some uh, great scenario planning that allows you to make um, better decisions based on, you know, past historical information, but also trends and things that are happening. The thing that's that's very important when you're looking at AI and strategy is you're not negating the fact that you need the humans involved in the conversation. Um, AI will do extremely well, you know, bringing up various trends and uh, scenario analysis and everything else, but really having the uh, human involved can really give you, it gives more color and clarity as far as what is the right direction for the organization to, to um, proceed along those lines. So very, very good in that sense in doing, you know, scenario planning, trends analysis, um, you know, looking past and looking in the future and everything else. To me, that's sort of the power of that tool used properly that can really give someone a good competitive advantage. You know, one of the big things is is what's what is the strategic objective that they're trying to, to get at at this point? I think they need to be very, very um, clear on that, because once you sort of have it's almost having that why and direction, then everything else starts falling into place at this point. Uh, so my strategic direction is X, then I'm going to start looking, OK, let's look at the technical considerations. You know, um, do I understand my data? You know, how is AI going to really impact you know, as far as model selections and everything else in, in the AI model that I'm looking at, you know, what's the scalability and how can I integrate it into my organization or am I building something new? So looking at the technical aspect of that, I think the other key thing, um, we're really good at putting uh, technologies and things in organizations, but the one piece that always seems to be left out is the organizational change management. It's the people aspect. And because people are, you know, tuned in and listening to various sources about AI and its impact and what is what is going to do to them instead of what it can do for them, I think there's a great opportunity not only for leadership to get buy-in from the organization, but also to have a really good tight um, change management plan that really helps employees understand okay, here's how we're going to up, upskill and, or here's how we're going to have to reskill. But it really keeps the, uh, the employee at, at mind what's going on when we're bringing this technology in. I think the other thing uh, just from um, this aspect is looking at 
you know, the ethical considerations. I'm, you know, you're hearing it all the time, you know, bias and fairness and everything else. And you really have to start looking at these models. This is where a good cross-functional team, you know, of different people with backgrounds and everything else, of expertise, um, cultures and everything along those lines can really begin to ask questions around this model, what you're trying to do to ensure the fact that, that there is nothing that's going to hinder or impact people in the wrong way. Of course, privacy and security is the other aspect you want to bring to the forefront. So I think, you know, the strategy, looking at the technical considerations, the organizational change management piece, and then the um, ethical considerations really sort of uh, package up, you know, strategy and how I'm trying to move forward as an organization. Because, you know, technology is changing at, you know, <laughs> at a rapid pace, I think one of the things that, that needs to have this, this is not a one and done. There's always going to have to be continuous monitoring and review, even when you put this in, in operation. So regular assessments, you know, tracking key metrics that you set up, you know, for the organization to make sure that what you put in is really starting to give you that, you um, that overall value to the organization, not just looking at ROI, but what is the total cost of ownership and putting things in, in the, into play. And also continually doing scenario analysis because uh, to the point is, you know, the land, you know, uh, field sort of changes dramatically. So I wanna make sure that I'm not drifting off in one direction that could be impactful um, to the organization along those lines. The other thing is, that as you're putting this in, this is about cultural change as well. So you want to make sure that you're always, um, you know, letting the organization know what's going on, how we're de developing things, but almost like you're putting in a learning loop. So if it's in the organization, you know, you want to bring back information to find out how are we doing and how are people not only adjusting to the new technology, but how is it being impactful to our customers as we're moving this thing out? And so there's there's definitely an investment in the continuous learning aspect and the um, and also embracing um, a little bit of experimentation that's controlled to make sure before you roll something out that it, it is what is it's going to do what you say it's going to do, and then you continually monitor it to make sure that uh, nothing happens. I think the other thing around change is that nothing can be rigid. It has to be very very flexible and almost almost modular in the sense where if things change, you can move things in and out, prioritize, you know, what's going on, how you're trying to do these things. And uh, and then real being real pointed around principles of, around AI and and not as rigid on specifics, you know, along those lines. And that, that way when things change and you're learning, having to learn how to be agile or adapt, you know, you're not stuck in a mode where you're gonna have to rip and redeployed at a, at a very costly um, uh, venture. Uh, the other thing too around change is always around collaboration and communication. Uh, you know, all, as, as the world changes and as we're being more competitive, you know, keeping abreast of what's going on and communicating that within the organizations becomes very, very crucial uh, to ensure the stakeholders in the organization are still buying in to what's going on um, as a company as a whole, but also as they're listening to the customers, they also giving you open you know, feedback as, as far as what they're seeing and what they're experiencing and everything else. I think the, and the last thing I would um, think of, about employing along this line is really some external experts, people who are in different fields that you can partner with, that can bring in insights and things to keep you abreast of what's going on as an organization you know, either inside your own sector, but sometimes even looking outside your, your sector as well to see what are some things that are being done well that I might be able to, you know, bring into my, um, in my work area, my organization to be more competitive in that arena. Long-term and short-term uh, is, is, is really the, the tension point because a lot of folks, you know, focus on those short-term gains without thinking long-term. I think if I'm stepping back, you know, really it's about clarity of purpose. You know, why am I doing this and why am I going in this direction? And you have to look beyond, you know, the, the tw uh, 12 months, 
you know, two year, three year aspects in that regard and start planning, you know, if things happen, this is where AI can help you from strategy planning and scenario planning. You know, what I know now and the trends that are happening five years or seven years from now, you know, what are some of the things that can happen? So having that sort of clarity of purpose of why I'm doing what I'm doing and being very, very clear on that, knowing the fact that things will change, but at least I have some sense of clarity, then I can start backing up and saying, okay, if this is my long-term view on a short-term basis, what are some things that I need to do to get to, to today? You know, what are we doing over the next 12 months and over the next two years or three years? So it's really, you know, um, looking at the end in mind and working our way backwards. So breaking it down into bite-sized chunks that becomes more operational um, aspect, of course, budget always comes into play. So how much I'm going to spend on what's needed to what what um, what I need to have as far as wants and then as far as future ventures. So how you want to break that up. And then the aspect of looking at, you know, my agile planning, adaptability. If something changes, a new entrant or new technology or something happens, you know, how quickly or how flexible are we to be able to make the, that shift without, you know, making dramatic swings that causes the organization to overreact or um, almost stumble and, and actually, um, uh, you know, has a ripple effect that's pretty catastrophic within the organization. Uh, the other piece of that would be always keeping your eye on, on the customer, you know, is what we're doing customer focused, but I also want to sort of manage that tension is, but I don't want to lose sight of my employees as well because they're the ones that are touching them. So having that sort of approach and understanding what's going on, customer-centric focus and also employee-centric, they both work tandem with each other is very, very important as well. And then the aspect, of course, you can't do anything without a scoreboard. So what, what KPIs or OKRs that you're going to have to be able to make sure that you are moving in the right direction and you're tracking those leading indicators to ensure that you're not off track and not just looking at lagging indicators that, you know, by the time you get it, you know, you're already off base and then you have to do some sort of correction. So those are some of the things that I would look at as far as um, long-term goals and managing the tension with um, short-term gains to make sure that um, every move I make is very, you know, methodical, strategic, and thought out that um, allows me to move in such a way that I'm being impactful uh, within my business sector. You know, you wanna set up something within the organization where people have that sort of open communication. You know, we've always said, you know, I have an open door policy and everything else, but even beyond that, especially with now a lot of organizations that are very, very remote, probably rethinking how we can uh, impact our culture. So having something along those lines where um, there's transparency to be able to share, you know, we, you have um, intranet sites, you have social media sites and everything else, making those available for uh, for employees to be able to give their perspectives, tell the good, bad, ugly that maybe they're experiencing, but not looking at it in the bad sense, but looking as mining for information that allows you to really um, fortify the, the culture, but also reinvigorate it. It's also two-way, you know, because you want the leadership to be able to share, hey, here's what we're thinking, here's where we're going, and being transparent, and then soliciting feedback from them to say, you know, what do you think, or what do you, what do you see, or what would you experience? I'm almost asking the question, like, if you were sitting in my seat, what would you, what would you do? And and it really, it really allows a, a two-way conversation. Knowing the fact, as a leader, you're going to make the ultimate decision. But what you really want is those who are closest to the customer are feeding you vital information that really helps you as a leader to ensure the fact that you're moving the organization in the right direction, especially when you talk about this AI technology. The other piece around um, the culture and everything else is, is uh, education and training and development. Um, we talked about, you know, reskilling and upskilling and, and uh, understanding the fact that um, AI and communicating that it's, I'm not here to use it to replace you, but I'm actually here to augment you, your skill sets and abilities. So how can we, you know, develop that career path or reskill or upskill an individual? So when this new technology comes in, they're better able to utilize the technology 
in a way that makes it more efficient and effective, you know, as an organization going forward. So I think those are some of the things is regular communication and putting into place some of these things that would really help the organization really transform itself um, in a way that it embraces the technology and um, really begin to make impact in their business sector. A couple of things, um, a lot of organizations are already doing like, um, uh, you know, uh, townhouse meetings and things along those lines. So you can utilize that um, e either if you're still mainly have folks on campus or even they're broadcasting. So you can do those sort of town hall things to be able to um, get the message out and get feedback from the employees. I think the other channel that um, that a lot of organizations have is their intranet sites. You know, they have forms where they can have Q and A's that they can, uh, employees can send in. Um, there's places that you might set up, you know, social media, um, private social media areas where they can actually provide feedback and things in that regard. Um, and also maybe set up a discussion platform, you know, discussion platform around AI technology and how is it impacting you or what's your thoughts and things along those lines. So you can make it very, very specific and mine information as far as how things are going, you know, globally. But I think if you really bring it in even closer, I think the leadership, if that's your managers, your supervisor, and everything else, when they have their one-on-ones with their staff, they can ask the, the staff, how's it going, you know, um, you know, with the adoption, are you seeing anything? How is it impacting you and everything else? There, at that level, you're getting into a smaller group and getting even more richer information because they're um, you trained your lead uh, sub leadership teams to be able to ask those questions and um, and be able to gather that information and be able to you know share it upstream. Uh, and then the other thing is around team huddles, you know, stand up meetings, you know, that uh, manufacturing. Um, uh, uh, folks are very, very used to is just getting together. There's no seating. Yeah. Hey, how's it going? What's going on? What are the things we need to look at uh, would be very, very beneficial as well. Um, I think the other thing you um, is setting up metrics and how you um, look at things, not only quantitatively of how things are happening, you know, um, you know, it's around uh, user satisfaction and things in that regard. But I think there's a qualitative aspect of employee emotional concerns and understanding and perceptions. So having those metrics in place that gives you sort of an insight what's going on organization is going to be very, very crucial. And of course, we keep mentioning it, you know, there's never, you, you can never over communicate in this arena. And it's always about this workshops on AI and uh, continuous learning. It's really getting in and listening to the employees say, what do you need? How can I help you be more um, effective in your role and responsibility. So I think those are some of the things that you can use to sort of gather some uh, real-time feedback from employees as you're rolling out AI. I think, you know, when there's sort of a, some apprehension of things, uh, this is where transparency comes into play and trust uh, as far as, you know, why are we doing this? What's the reason why we're bringing in this new technology? And that's where I think it's it's really important to communicate that, you know, AI is really not a replacement of people, but it's really an enhancement to the skills and, and things that are needed to be done. Uh, and also how, you know, AI and the humans actually are working together to be uh, more effective in their role but also as an organization, how we can be more effective in our business sector. So I think listening to the um, feedback from the employee, I mean, the apprehensions they might have, um, you know, a lot of it because maybe they're remote, they think that, um, oh, you're using this technology either to spy on me in some way, shape or form, or um, you're using this technology to figure out, okay, how I'm doing my work and then you eliminate me in that regard. But it's ve being very deliberate in the communication about, you know, here here is why we're bringing this technology in. Here's strategically why it's important to us as a company. But here's why it's important to you as an employee. A lot of employees have, you know, voice the fact of, you know, uh, I don't have any work-life balance along those lines. And, you know, some of these tools that you bring in could actually make them more efficient and effective and get a lot of manual stuff out of the way so they can have, you know, um, 
a good work-life balance because you dealt with the workload balance issue at, at hand. So I think having that open conversation, listening to some of the uh, concerns that they might have and answering those questions, you know, um, very forthright and, uh, and, and in a trustworthy manner and very transparent, and then coming back and revisiting that to make sure that, hey, how's it going? You know, here's what we talked about. Um, uh, are you seeing the, the the right changes and things that really helps you as a, a member of our organization? Uh, and that way you start getting a, a two-way conversation back and they're, they're feeling that you're doing something to help them, not something to really to do something to hurt them in any way. Uh, again, uh, I think some met uh, places, uh, things you can actually do. Uh, definitely, you know, surveying your organization um, is it would be crucial uh, to get some feedback um, along those lines. I think in, even in a more real time aspect, is doing one on ones with with uh, specific teams that are heavily involved in it. Um, your team meetings, um, having that as far as uh, being on the agenda for conversation. Um, the, uh, you know, when you're doing your sort of global or town hall strategy conversations, making that part of the um, opportunity for you to gain um, information. And it's almost like when you're having some of these meetings, um, condense what you need to deliver and probably put more time in the Q&A session to give them opportunity to speak. And a lot of folks will probably speak up, you know, in some of these group sort of meetings, but a lot of people are very shy and reserved and that's why I think coming to them in a one-on-one uh, -on -one manner would be very helpful. Utilize, you know, your internet sites, utilize your social media, utilize anything that you can put out there because people consume information differently. Some will look at emails, some will look at the um, company website along those lines, and other people are talking to um, people that they trust in the organization. So the more you can actually even build AI evangelists, so to speak, or people who are I mean, very understanding and know how the technology is being used, they can also become um, eyes and ears for you as well in spreading the information and also giving information. So it's almost like having an, an AI task force of people who are embedded in the organization to be able to, um, you know, sort of solidify the information, understand it, and then actually share it with people who have questions that they would trust and go to. those challenges for a leader one is adaptability and i think um, covid actually made that relatively clear that um, when change hit all of us um, being able to adapt in a very volatile uncertain chaotic time um, sort of ripped ripped to shreds a, a lot of strategies but so now with this technology entering in being able to adapt um, in, in a fashion that allows you to really pivot in a direction that's going to be very helpful. So adaptability is going to be one of them. I think the other um, aspect is being able to think creatively and also um, critically and also being able to communicate that in such a way that um, people understand, you know, what, you know, you're talking about and, um, and then also how can, um, you know, we can collaborate together. So I think those are some of the skills other than what they're, uh, all the leaders are doing strategic thinking. Um, but the other aspect bringing in, because it's AI is ethical decision-making, things will come up and um, being in uh, a leadership role, sometimes you're gonna have to make a decision that's gonna be um, very weighty and uh, uh, having a framework to make that ethical decision is gonna be very, very crucial. Part of it is, is, is have the conversation early, you know, don't develop something and also have an ethical conversation is really how do I in, integrate that into the um, into the operation in early stages so that that's talk, uh, going through, um, you know, this sort of transparency and um, explaining, you know, why we're using certain models or why we're uh, making certain decisions or, you know, things in that regard that uh, might raise the level of awareness but it really gets down to the point where people can ask the question around, um, is there any element of bias that's in here? Is there any element that might 
um, uh, cause any problems around privacy and security. So I think that becomes very crucial around transparency, but being fair, um, you know, doing regular audits. Once something goes in, how can I audit that on a routine basis? And, uh, and then always, you know, I'm constantly educating, especially when new things are rolled out, you know, how can we continually uh, improve what we're doing with the aspect of the ethical impact on us as an organization, but also the people that we're also serving as well. You know, critical thinking is going to be going to be crucial, and 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 I uh, probably even more so because of the dynamics and things that are happening. Not only critical thinking, but also creative thinking. Um, so, you know, thinking, you know, that this is the way we've always done it is is almost a recipe for disaster. So, being have critical thinking, have creative thinking, and uh, the other piece that I thought probably going to sound like all C's is really cultural awareness. Um, you know, because um, we have a diverse uh, population, even here in the United States. You just cannot uh, think about cultural impact and what's going to happen. Um, the other aspect of being empathetic, uh, you, you have to be able to be supportive of what's going on within the organization and, um, and fostering that collaboration and trust. And the only way you're going to be able to do that as a leader is to be very, very empathetic and listening and addressing those things. And sometimes even saying something hard like, well, here's where we're going uh, and here's why and the decision. It's not like people are, everybody's going to like you, but at least they re can respect the decision because you were very transparent and, and trustworthy along those lines. The other aspect that, like I mentioned, is being very adaptable, um, agile, and making dis, uh, making pivot changes as things are happening. But is pivot changes based on data, not just based on um, a whim or something um, gut feel along those lines? Because you, you're making a shift that impacts the entire organization. Um, the other thing, too, two other things. One is humility, um, <laughs> which is uh, leaders being humble enough to go even to the lowest ranks and ask questions of people who are probably not as um, gifted or highly educated or whatever, but they do understand the business. And I think uh, somebody who is humble enough to go out and, and at least um, uh, solicit that information, but also humble enough to know, hey, I made a mistake and here's the reason how uh, here's the reason why this happened or along those lines it takes a lot of humility, but also the aspect not just being humble, but also the aspect of being accountable. Um, you know, sometimes things just don't go the way we want, but instead of, you know, saying it's somebody else's fault, I'm, I'm sitting in the leadership role. It's my, um, I'm taking, you know, extreme ownership of this and, um, here's how we're going to work our way back on track. And, um, and I need your help and everything else. So that humility accountability, um, aspect plays a very strong role, um, as a leader who's leading the adoption of AI in an organization. <laughs> 